Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to test out the VLM rocket. This is from Brazil. It is a planned rocket that will be able to launch 150 kilograms to low earth orbit. And we have a 150 kilogram test payload here. And I have not brought this rocket to orbit yet. I have modeled it and configured it. but. I've got it close to orbit, but after, I hadn't gotten to orbit yet, and I've done a few tweaks, so we'll see if they work. And so yeah, 150 kilograms. This is a control core and adapter, so it'll have the decoupler. Uh, this is a third stage. All three stages are solid rocket boosters. And for the third stage, it has nitrogen RCS. They said cold, cold gas thrusters, and I just interpreted that as nitrogen. And so we have a little bit of nitrogen, and we have this uh, S44 third stage. And then we have two identical stages, except the second stage has a vacuum nozzle. So they're the S50 and the S50V, and these are about 450 kilonewtons. I'll tell you what I know about the rocket, or think I know, and uh, how close I've gotten to what they have said it ought to be. So the total mass of the rocket is supposed to be 28 tons. And as you can see, I'll put on the fairings here. Uh, I've assumed the fairings are 0.15 tons a piece, so that might be a little bit heavy, but 28.754 tons is what I went for. And that's because I wanted to pack as much fuel as possible. Uh, of course, there are a lot of things we don't know. Uh, we know the 28 tons, but what we don't know is for the first and second stages, uh, what the dry mass is, uh, what exactly the propellant mass is. We have those numbers for older versions of their rocket, uh, the VLS-1, etc., but not for the VLM. So, and it's got larger SRBs on these stages than the VLS-1. So, yeah, that is a big unknown, and I had to guess that based on basically the proportion of wet-to-dry mass on the VLS-1 was a major contributor to that. We do know the numbers fairly well for the third stage, and that is because it was used on the VLS-1, except this one might be a slightly updated version, but basically uh, it is a 32.5 to 33.2 kilonewton thrust uh, engine, and, well, I say engine, SRB. Uh, Wikipedia had it at 282 second ISV, but I think they were doing the thing where they just divide the specific uh, the um, exhaust velocity by 10, and so they got the wrong number. Uh, B14643.de, which is another source for rocket info, uh, set this as 288.9 seconds of ISP. So that's what I've gone for. And a dry mass of 0.15 tons uh, matched the VLS-1 version. And the burn time is supposed to be 71 seconds. We've got 73 seconds. If you are new to my channel and wondering why I'm going through this is because I have made a replica rocket and I'm trying to tell you the information I have on this rocket, but we don't have all the information. And so I'm telling you what I think I got right and what I don't know if I've got right. And the purpose of this video largely is to show you how it works and solicit any suggestions you might have. I won't necessarily take them it depends on whether I think they're going to be useful or not, basically. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but this is how I have the third stage configured. The second stage has a vacuum nozzle, but we don't really have very good numbers on the second stage at all. The sizes are about right, by the way. The first stage, they said, was 450 kilonewtons, and it is an official document. And we've got 270 second ISP for it. That is from Wikipedia, unfortunately. We do not have the sea level ISP, so I made a best guess on that. And based on the amount of thrust we have, 28 tons seems reasonable. We have a decent liftoff thrust. But, you know, configuring a rocket, a solid rocket with three solid stages is tough. And also, especially if you have the first two stages be identical, which they are here, except because of the vacuum nozzle on the second stage, instead of 450, we get 459, and the engine ISP is 282. Now, this wasn't given, but it is based on the specific impulse on the VLS-1 second stage. So I assume that they would have the same sort of vacuum performance on the second stage here, even though there's a larger SRB, of course. 
And yeah, as far as control goes, these two are both configured with gimbal. So we're assuming that they can thrust vector the nozzle. Uh, the roll control provided by these fins, but I don't know about any roll control on the second stage. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, the burn time, the first, uh, the third stage was supposed to be 71 seconds. I've got it at 73, but that's with a thrust tail off, so it's sort of a question mark. Uh, these two were supposed to be 82 seconds, but it's reading 80, uh, sorry, 77 right now, so five seconds short. Uh, I don't know how to increase that, frankly, without going over 28 tons. Um, the efficiency is what it is. Uh, we could make the bodies less massive. In other words, right now their dry mass is about uh, 1.8 tons, 1.82, and this one is 1.8. Uh, we could make them less, less massive and then pack in more propellant to boost it up. But I also don't know if this is reading the time right given the fact that they have thrust curves. And the thrust curves took a while, by the way. That was a major thing. Another interesting point here is that they do have this hot staging grid thing. And that certainly means that the second stage ignites while the first stage is still on. That would be necessary in this case because it, right when the staging happens, it'll be going through max Q, so they definitely don't want to lose control at that point. So yeah, we'll be hot staging there. Not the best time for a staging. Uh, it's going to be a little bit painful, but we'll try our best. So the question is whether this can actually get the 150 kilograms to orbit, and we will take a look and see how it goes. Okay, so we don't have a launch site in Brazil right now in real solar system, but hopefully people will forgive me for using Kuru. It's close, uh, at least uh, as far as the dynamics in terms of getting to orbit are concerned, it's close. But yeah, hopefully we will get a site in Brazil actually at some point. But SAS on, uh, we don't actually need to increase the throttle and it's probably safer if we don't. Okay, so here we go. Launch. So we do want to keep an eye on the propellant in this stage because we are going to need to hot stage. And so I need to know the timing of that and also when to release that stage. This would probably better be done by KOS, a script, instead of me doing it manually, but we'll try manually first. And we can see the specific impulse and thrust there. There is a thrust curve. And I tried to make it so that it would last the time that it ought to. But uh, it's not clear that it does. We'll see. Okay, ignition. And separation. Might not be the most efficient thing. But at least we got it going. We did not flip, in other words. That's the most important thing. Okay, let's see about our trajectory here. This stage gets to really high g-forces. I've assumed that it has the same thrust curve as the other stage. The first stage. And the first stage, by nature, would have to have a maximum thrust up front to lift off or close to maximum. I put it a little bit shy of absolutely the most. It's like at 90% on liftoff. We will have to coast with this a bit. I'm assuming they'll wait until it's over before releasing the fairings because otherwise our g-forces are really really high and it might be dangerous. Okay, thrust tail off, separate the fairings. Okay, I pre-activated the RCS like that. Uh, separate and we'll let it puff a little. This is where it's important to have the throttle down, by the way, otherwise the RCS would push us forward. We could carry less nitrogen potentially. I don't think it's a major thing. Nitrogen is fairly light. So we're just coasting for a little bit. The timing on this stage is supposed to be 71 seconds, and we've got 73. So, split the difference, we could wait until we're about 35 seconds away from our apoapsis, so I'm looking at that time there. 
we're fairly low right now just because I want to try and make orbit. <laughs> Uh, I, I think they said that I could carry 150 kilograms to 300 kilo, uh, 300 kilometer orbit. Okay, we're gonna let pass. Go. Okay, this little flame works. I have no idea if this will work in stock or anything. Um, yeah, and I don't plan on testing that. And it'll be configured for RP-2000 as an option. In fact, I wanted to do this rocket primarily because RP-2000 was lacking in solid rocket motors. And I thought this would be a good way of getting them in. Uh, we'll have some others that might be of interest. No, let's pitch up a little. Again, that's all done with the RCS. This one, this nozzle does not gimbal. Well, it fell a little bit short. Uh, except, I guess I can expend the nitrogen. I guess we'll lighten up on the nitrogen, though. Uh, that would require people to be extra careful with the rocket. I mean, I don't know how heavy the control unit is supposed to be. That's one question mark. Ah, uh, we don't quite get enough. But if we were carrying less nitrogen, because it's less efficient, maybe it'd work out. So, tell you what, I'll quickly fix that. I'll cut down the nitrogen in half and then we'll see. Okay, here we go again. It is a minor tweak, just the reduction in nitrogen. Maybe I'll get a better trajectory this time, we'll see. But uh, I don't need to throttle up. Uh, STS on and launch. And again, we want to track that HTPB in the first stage. The little fins don't actuate on here. I will link it in the video description. It'll be the full small rockets pack with this as part of it. Okay, hot staging and separation. Okay, we are on the second stage safely. That is a tricky switch, let me tell you. Going for a bit higher of an apoapsis here. We'll see whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, fairings. And separation. Oh, uh, I didn't pre-activate the RCS this time. Alright. So we are just coasting now. Okay, here we go. I think it's a good time to ignite. Hopefully this will save us from pitching up. We sort of pitched up a little last time. I admittedly just went with a woodish texture on this. I have no idea what it looks like. The first and second stage, there was an image of a second stage on one website. And so I it mimicked that. Uh, there was one on display, so and a photo of it. So I just went with that with the little stripes on the side. I have no idea how it will actually look. Uh, well, still not quite there. We could go with even less nitrogen, but then it'll be problematic for other users of this. It's very marginal, and again, we could take less than 150 kilograms up, of course, uh, so it could work for that. But I'll, I'll think about how to uh, patch this up. It'll be functional for, let's say, 140 kilograms or something like that. Uh, so I will link the full small rockets pack. It'll be the GitHub for the small rockets pack, and it'll be the full bunch of things. And this will be included. And all you need to do is type VLM in the VAB search window to get all the parts. And yeah, tell me if there's anything you know about it that I should uh, touch up on. But I would like to do that before like making the rocket profile on it. So that is why I'm soliciting suggestions. But if it's something that is likely to change between now and when they actually potentially launch this thing, I might shy away from making those kinds of changes. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, but maybe some masses could be reduced. We'll, uh, after all, it was only by analogy that I got the dry masses. We could reduce the dry mass of stuff. 
and fix it like that. And I'll think about that for future versions. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.